RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Well, as Milo has told you, the day is just perfect. Now we just need some real good White Sox baseball here today to make it a perfect day. A left-hander, Lolich, is on the mound. Don Buford, batting right-handed, is the leadoff man. And here is the first pitch of the game. And it's close at the knee, ball one. Yankees lead Cleveland 2 to nothing. Washington leads Kansas City 3 to nothing. Mets lead the Phillies 5 to 1. That's all there is on the board. It's 340 down the left field line, 325 down the right field line, 440 to center field, 365 to left center, ball high, 370 to right center, double deck, dark green paint, roof in left field, roof in right field, but from left center to right center, it's an open face upper deck. And the long scoreboard right up on top. Strike at the knee. Buford didn't like that call at all. It looked a little bit low. Cuccinello coaching here at third. Don Guthridge back over at first. And our first game of the doubleheader is underway. Swing and a miss. Buford has made 86 hits, 12 doubles, 2 triples, 7 home runs. Has hit for 123 total bases. And a swing at an outside fastball. That's the one he should have let go. Strike three. So that is the first strikeout. And it's going to bring up Floyd Robinson, our guest on today's dugout show. The Mets are celebrating Casey Stengel's birthday. They're leading six to one at the end of three. Floyd Robinson takes one low a ball. Robinson is batting 261 with 35 runs batted in, 10 doubles, two triples, and eight home runs. A very high foul. Let's see if there's a play. No. It's underneath us here. But back into the box seats. And it's a ball one, strike one count on Robinson. Robinson hits left-handers pretty well. Anybody who finishes with a 300-plus average has to be able to hit both types. Especially a player like Robinson who plays against both types of pitching. Well, Minnesota lost again last night to Baltimore, and they're underway now. Last night, Boop Powell hit a home run that did the trick. Here is a high fly ball into right field that's going to be caught. The right fielder Demeter has it for the up. That's going to bring up John Honey Romano. Romano is batting 240 with 16 RBIs. Six homers, eight doubles. Now the outfield that was around to the right swings around to the left. Romano looks at a high, wide fastball. He's gone ball one in every hitter. First three hitters have all had the first one very wide. There's a beautiful slow curve. It's dropped in on the outside corner right across the knees. Call strike and it's one and one. Strike two, fastball across the knees. playing short again today with Word at third, Lumpy at second, and Cash at first. Romano smashes a clean hit to right. First hit of the game. A single into right field. That's going to bring up Ward. Ward is batting 301 with 19 doubles, five home runs, and yesterday 
five for five. So Ward the better with Romano on first. Lolich getting set. He tried to check his swing on a fastball. The umpire's right hand shot up into the air. Lolich came in high and fast. It's a strike. Pittsburgh and the Cubs underway. No score at the end of one. Veal and Kuntz. Outside a ball, one and one. Veal had a spell where he was very wild. In fact, in his last start, he walked the first four men, but wound up strong, was out on the coast. The outfield is playing Ward straight away. And a ball, high fastball outside, it's ball two, two and one. Boston two, the... Angels won at the end of one. Dean Chance lasted four and a half innings yesterday, gave up seven bases on balls, as well as a flock of hits. You can figure pitchers out why you've got an answer nobody seems to have. Strike, nice slow curve. Washington on top again. Three to nothing over Kansas City. Well, they're really fattening up. They're looking up. They've had surprising ball from Hamlin this year. Second baseman. Got a lot of big hits for them. Swing and a miss. Ward struck out. No runs. One hit. One left. So he picks up two strikeouts in the first inning. And in the middle of the first inning, with the Sox going on the field, the White Sox, no runs, one hit, Detroit coming to bat. You know, there's one way you can cool your home this summer just as fast as good pitching can cool off a hot batting streak. That's to install central gas air conditioning. Central gas air conditioning makes noisy window units obsolete because it cools your whole house from a central location away from your rooms. And the gas cooling system has fewer moving parts to make noise or wear out. That's why People's Gas will service a new residential gas air conditioner free for five full years. Right now, you can add central gas air conditioning to your present gas heating equipment for less than ever. And it costs less than ever to operate. Thanks to 1964's big 40% reduction in gas air conditioning rates. So call your heating and air conditioning contractor or call People's Gas. The number at People's Gas, 431-4000. Find out about the new low prices. Find out why gas does the big jobs better for less. Let me place the Sox defensively for you. Ward at third, Hanson at short, Buford at second, and Scourin at first. Robinson in right field, Barry in center field, and Big Nick in left field. The pitcher is Tommy John, and the catcher is Romano. John has worked 97 innings and given up 81 hits. He has struck out 65 batters and walked only 29. He has thrown only three home run balls, and he has an earned run average of 2.97. The leadoff batter is Wirt. Who's that coach? Pat Mullen. Pat Mullen coaching at first, and Scaff over here to our left at third. Swing and a miss, strike two. Slim Tommy John. Word right here below us. We're on the left side of the plate. Fastball moves away, a ball one and two. Scaff, the coach at third, looks like a bulldog. He's pacing up and down there. Little guy with a... Here's a swing and a chop to short. Hanson's got to get rid of it quickly, and it's out. It's going to bring up Lumpy. That ball 
ball was a high chop, hit slowly. It had three loops to it. On a play on a ball like that, if the infielder can come in and get it off the second loop, but he was afraid to make a move in, he backed up and played it on the third loop and then had to hustle his throw. John fires a fastball right in over the heart of the plate. One strike. Well, I hope it's cooler and nice in Chicago today. Swing and a chopper foul down the first baseline. Scarron caught it on a big loop, and it's two strikes. Well, if they can just get the moose back hitting, he's one of the bellwethers on this ball club. He and Ward, if they're hitting, everybody else seems to pick up their tempo. Slumps are part of baseball, hitting slumps, pitching slumps, and all that sort of thing. But you know, the Sox have got a couple of bad games out of their system here, but Minnesota's lost two, and they're not too bad off in the standing because uh, just put together get going here again and they should start picking up in their pitching and hitting and uh, they're not far off the pace a fastball a little bit too low and it's two and two lumpy the batter K-line underneath us Lumpy's up off the bat handle about three inches. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So there are two gone. And here is Cash. Cash and K-Line have shiny helmets. Lumpy, who was just up there, his helmet almost looked gray. They're, well, they're dark blue or black. I guess they're black. Some of these fellows really go to work and do a shining job on their helmets. They're very shiny. They pitch to Cash, swing over the hook and a miss. One strike. Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre pitching for the Yankees. They're leading two to nothing. McDowell beat them last night. Pitched a terrific ball game and had 12 strikeouts. Andy Koufax finally came out on the wrong end last night. Here's a ball that's low. Drysdale went into bat for him in the ninth inning and struck out. St. Louis won that ball game. The pitch to Cash is low. The ball two and a strike two count on Cash. Two out of nobody on first inning at Detroit. Big day of baseball. Strike three called. Out on strikes. So it is three up and three down. Quite a contrast to yesterday's ball game when they got a flock of runs in the first inning. We are now at the end of one here in Detroit at Tiger Stadium. And the Tigers, no runs, no hits. The White Sox, no runs and one hit. A cool question for all of you with central gas heat in your homes. How would you like to have an air conditioning system that's just as quiet and comfortable? A system that'll make your home cool all over like a new high-rise. The answer is a residential central gas add-on unit. And now's the time to put it in. Because it costs less than ever to add whole house central gas air conditioning to your gas heating equipment. And gas air conditioning rates were reduced 40% in 1964. That's not all. Central gas air conditioning is so dependable that you get five full years of free service. No matter who installs your new gas air conditioner, People's Gas will service it free for five full years, so you can't go wrong. If you want to enjoy fresh central gas cooling, the kind that's even all through the house, get a central gas add-on unit. Call your heating and air conditioning contractor or call People's Gas 431-4000. Find out why gas does the big jobs better for less. We're moving into the second inning, and here's a smash on the ground off of the third baseman's glove, and Skyron is safe at first. The shortstop made a terrific recovery on that ball. Euler, as the ball took a bad hop at the third baseman, went off of his glove into the shortstop area, Euler made a terrific recovery and throw, and it scored as a hit. 
So that is hit number two, and here is Hanson. Mazarowski just hit a home run at Chicago. Oh, they've got the tools to play long ball, those Pirates. Canigliaro hit a two-run homer at Boston for their two runs. Leading two to one at the end of one. Now the pitch to Ron Hanson. Across the knee, a call strike. Three of the top ten. Stars of the home run. Stars of the Pittsburgh is well represented in the leaders in the various divisions of hitting. They have three in the top ten in the National League with Roberto Clemente up there again. Here is our, here's the, well, I never saw a wild pitch like that. The ball jumped right out of Lodich's hand and almost went into the Sox dugout. And what happened was, uh, Milo, was that he had gripped the ball a certain way and he turned his head to look at the, at the runner at first base and let the ball go, and he almost threw it into the dugout. That's exactly right. It went... It didn't go near the plate. It didn't go near first base. It went right between home plate and first base. It's almost as if he d couldn't decide whether to throw to the plate or to first. And as a result, the ball just seemed to come out of the end of his fingers. If we're calling that a wild pitch. <laughs> That's a wild pitch. They've scored it up. What else could they do? And the Moose is on second. There's nobody out. Let's take advantage we're of it. Talking about the front. Pirates, Stargell has 69 runs batted in. Stargell has 22 home runs. They got a lot of power in that club. Well, here's Hanson. Now with a chance to knock in the first run of the ball game. A man on third on that wild pitch. Or Skyron on second. And a ball that's low and away. Mickey Lolich, that ball just slipped out of his hand. And almost went into the Sox dugout. And it was a blooper throw. Just a little, like a little pop-up. Had no speed behind it. Here is a throw back to second base, and Moose was hanging on to his head as Oilers slipped in behind him. It was not to get beaned. He got a ball two and a strike one count on Hanson. We're in the second inning at Detroit. And Lolich is ready. Here's a ground ball to the right side. They have to play the batter. He's out, and Skarin has gone to third. Here's Nicholson. A man on third with one out. Mets eight, the Phillies one at the end of four. Well, they have a big... They're playing a doubleheader there today, and between games... They're going to trot out a big birthday cake, and I guess Casey's supposed to pop out of it. One of those big things that's partly cardboard. They're going to put on quite a show today for the grand old gentleman, Casey Stengel, at Shea Stadium. It looks like his boys are going to have to have a day for him. Here's a swing and a foul off here to the right, one strike. Field is pulled in a bit. Moose is on third base. One out in the second inning. Fast strike at the knee. Well, if good old Nick could just start to hit a few, it would be a great tonic for this ball club. This year, he didn't get off to the start he got off to last year, and boy, he really helped. Moose on third base, and Mickey Lolich is getting set. Ball over his head, one and two. Number 11, Nicholson playing in left field. Cater's not ready yet. He should be set for the Cleveland series. He's set again. And a ball. It's in too close, and it's ball two. Two and two. A ball two 
and a strike two count on Big Nick. Takes his helmet off and wipes his forehead. Second inning at Tiger Stadium. Man on third, the infield pulled in close and one out. And the pitch to Nick. Ball. Well, he's holding up there. He's not going for those bad pitches. They haven't been too bad. Lolich trying to make him swing at a bad one. And it's a ball three, strike two count. The on deck man is Barry. Lolich takes a lot of time. Gets set again. Ball, he walked him. So Nick resisted going after bad pitches as the pitcher obviously was working on him, knowing that part of his weakness to a fellow who overswings a lot like Nicholson does is to make him anxious. And if Nick can just restrain himself and wait till that ball's in that strike zone and nail a few, he could get going again. Last year, he was a terror for about a month. Here is Barry, the center fielder. He got out ahead of a half-speed curve. One strike. Barry wearing his new number, 16. He gave his former number, 17, to Frank Larry, who wore that number here in his years with the Tigers. Swing and a foul back on the screen, and it's two strikes on Barry. Mascaron on third, Nick on first, and only one out. Lolich takes a little bit of extra time. Yankee-Cleveland game has gone into the ninth inning. Here is a high foul that's going back out of play. See this guy get a hit one out of here. Thank you. I brought us a bread of water today. Lowlich getting a new baseball, takes his glove off now and smooths it around in his hand. This guy's our lucky man. He got us out of his way. Barry the batter with runners at first and at third. Here is another high foul way over to the right out of play. Getting set. Sox in their traveling blues. Here for two today at Detroit. Scarin let off with a hit. Went all the way to second on a wild pitch. He checked this swing. Boy, he started to go for a very bad pitch. And Lolich is not happy with that call. One and two count on Barry. Breeze here today. It's much more pleasant. It's in the 70s. Lolich checks the... Throws to first. And it's back in time. Mickey Lolich. Left-hander in this first game. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh, that's his third strikeout. The chance to have 
Get a runner in with just a fly ball. Barry struck out. Here's John. Tommy John is stepping in. Runners are still at first and at third. Lowlich getting a sign. And a foul. The ball hit the bat. Rolls back to the screen. One strike. Nick on first base. Garin on third base. In the second inning. Outside, it's one and one. Mickey Lolich, chunky lefty, gets set again. Here's a swing and a miss. One and two. One and two count. John with a number 25 on the back of his uniform. Swing and a ground foul. Sox had a man on in the first inning after two out. Had the leadoff man on here. And after one out, Nick walked. They've had two men on. Runners on first and third. Barry struck out. Swing and a miss. He struck out. So four strikeouts for Lolich in the first two innings. In the inning, no runs. One hit, a walk, and two were left. And in the middle of the second inning at Detroit, the White Sox, no runs, two hits. Detroit, no runs, and no hits. Let's think cool for a minute. Are you in the market for a new house, or maybe you're building one? Well, now's the time to plan your heating and air conditioning the right way. A combination residential central gas air conditioning and heating unit can cost surprisingly little. And gas air conditioning rates were reduced 40% in 1964. So central gas air conditioning is a better deal right now than ever. And when you're building, you can use the same blowers and ducts for heating and for cooling. Your new home will be as comfortable as a new high rise. You can't go wrong. A new whole house gas air conditioner is so dependable that people's gas will service it free for five full years. If you're building or buying a new house, be sure you get central gas air conditioning and heating. Call your heating and air conditioning contractor or People's Gas for 314000 Find out why the gas does the big jobs better for less. Remember that number, 431 Call People's Gas. Our first game at Detroit is moving into the bottom of the second inning. Ward at third, Hanson at short, Buford at second, and Scourin at first. Robinson in right field, Barry in center field, and Nick in left field. John the pitcher, and Romano the catcher. Here is Kaline. Klein has gone in to pitch for Washington. Spring has gone in to pitch for Cleveland. has gone in to pitch for the Phillies. And the pitch to K-Line is a low fastball for ball one. Here is a ball that just missed ball two. Nice 
crowd today in a shirt sleeve crowd strike at the knee it's a very pleasant day the oppressive heat and the humidity has disappeared after the heavy rain of yesterday here is a swing and a foul of all going in the stands here to our right Remember, the box office at home at Sox Park will be open for two hours yet. Got the Cup game, tickets on sale for that. And then the big homestand that gets underway Friday night with this club, Detroit. Sox will be home for a couple of weeks. K line hits a curve and hits a long fly ball way down into the corner, and it's caught down there by Nicholson. And boy, this crowd started to roar. When a ball goes like that, well, it looks like it's going to go out of here, but that ball suddenly sunk out there, and Nick caught it in the corner. That's going to bring up Horton. And the pitch to Horton. Swing and a miss. One strike. Tommy John readies and fires a change up and it's fouled down the left field line. Foul ball way down into the corner. Sox have had two hits, Detroit none. The Sox have had four strikeouts in two innings, one reason why they haven't scored. They've had chances in both innings. Ball, it's low. That again and the pitch. Horton takes a ball low. It's two and two. Well, Tony Cuccinello, who was at Baltimore, an old timers game, hung around to see quite a ball game there last night. As Baltimore beat Minnesota again. And beat Pasquale. Here's a hit to center field. Single to center for their first hit. up Demeter. Mullen, the first base coach, goes over to talk to Willie Horton. Shaft down here at third, keeps facing up and down. WCFL Chicago. Came out of the National League. John is ready and fires a beauty in across the knee. Let me see the rating standing. He set again. And a very high fly ball into right field. Robinson has a long run, but he's going to get it, and he does. He actually uppercutted that pitch and hit a twisting fly ball shallow in right field that was going toward the line and Robinson was playing a right hand hitter in right center. He had to run practically a half a block across right field to catch that ball. Minnesota's American League lead has been cut to two and a half. The Dodger National League lead has been cut to one and a half. Cincinnati pressing in the National and Baltimore has moved to within two and a half of the top with their two straight wins. Freehand takes a look and it's a ball wide. Yankees playing two at Cleveland, Kansas City two. Minnesota and Baltimore are playing one. It'll be Cotton and Miller and a ball low. Los Angeles one at Boston. And the Sox, two at Detroit. Pittsburgh at Chicago for two. The Phillies at New York for two on Stengel's birthday, and they're getting bombed eight to one. Cincinnati at Houston, one. Milwaukee at San Francisco, one. 
And a swing and a foul tip strike. The catcher held it two and one. We're so close here, you can actually hear when a batter kicks a ball. That's how close we are to the plate. You can just hear that tick as he ticked that ball, and Romano held on. St. Louis at Los Angeles. And he went reaching for a high fastball and missed, and it's two and two. Ball two, strike two. Tommy John. Runner going, swing and threw the bat at it. That's all. They don't have to play him. There's already three out. He threw his bat at the ball to cover up Horton going down. And that is a strikeout. And that is number three. So in the inning, no runs, one hit, one left. And we are now at the end of two at Detroit. Bob Elson with Milo Hamilton. The White Sox, no runs, two hits, no errors. Detroit, no runs, one hit, no errors. We're brought to you now by the Chicago Rambler dealers. For the fourth straight year, Rambler American 440 won the Class B Mobile Economy run with a big 25 and 6,500 miles per gallon. And what a run it was. Over 3,200 miles of the roughest driving the mobile people have yet devised. Sizzling hot desert, snow-capped mountain passes, gas-wasting city traffic, and high-speed turnpikes from Los Angeles to New York. But gasoline economy is just a small part of the Rambler story. Rambler's got high resale value proven by official used car guides. And we can offer you all the sporty options you could want, like reclining bucket seats, disc brakes, two kinds of floor shifts, and our big choice of hustling new engines. See the American 440 at your neighborhood Rambler dealer. Now stop in and see this Rambler dealer. It might be in your neighborhood. Cecil Cleaver, Time Motors Incorporated, 401 East 5th Avenue in Gary, Indiana. That's Time Motors Incorporated in Gary. Kansas City just scored two. Washington leading three to two. Pittsburgh got another. They lead the Cubs two to nothing. Don Buford, who struck out in the first inning, is going to lead off. Beauty, strike one. The Angels in Boston are tied at two and two at the end of three. Buford chops a foul to the left. Don Buford is the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Robinson, Romano Ward. Third inning, scoreless ball game at Detroit. Low, a ball, one and two. Right handed, Buford is batting 312, left handed 271. Here's a chopper the pitcher's going to get. Turns and throws, and it's out. One gone. Here is Floyd Robinson, who hit a high fly ball to right field the first time up. Let's get a break in right here. This is the WCFL, Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. WCFL, the voice of labor in Chicago. It's 11 minutes past 2 o'clock, 80 degrees. Yeah. Robinson takes a ball low. <laughs> Mickey Lolich. This time gets ready. Here's a high foul. Catcher freehand comes back, but it's out of play. Oh, so he's got a two strike count on Floyd Robinson with Romano on deck. The 
field is playing Robinson straight away. There's a foul to the left. So one and two count. Robinson has had 90 hits to lead the ball club in hits made. Number three, Floyd Robinson, the batter here in the third. And a ground ball to Lumpy to his left. And it's out, two gone. Here is Romano, who had a single to right the first time up. John Romano, the batter. Yankees win it three to nothing, final, first game. Mel Stottlemyre. Yeah. Yeah, we got an announcer on duty there today. Let me talk. Here's a bouncing ball left side. Easy play. Euler letting it go. Out. Three up and three down. No runs. No hits. No errors. And so, friends, in the middle of the third at Detroit, they score. The White Sox, no runs, two hits, no errors. Detroit, no runs, one hit, no errors. Say, have you heard the latest about those crazy Rambler dealers? No, what they do now? Well, they're having a big kumquat sale. Oh, you mean they're selling kumquats? No, they're having a big sale on 65 Ramblers, but they're calling it a kumquat sale. Why are they doing that? Well, who knows? But the way I figure it, anyone who sells Ramblers and calls them kumquats must have flipped a little, right? Right. So if they're that confused, imagine the kind of deals they must be offering. Good, huh? Good? <laughs> I figure we'd better get down to our Rambler dealer before he runs out. Runs out of kumquats? No, Ramblers. Oh, then the whole line of Ramblers is in the kumquat sale. Sure. Ambassadors, classics, and Americans. What about Marlin? I don't know. What does it taste like? Detroit is moving into the bottom of the third. And the shortstop, Euler, will be followed by the pitcher, Lolich, and then the leadoff man, Wirt. Tooling in late, Ward is at third, Hanson at short, Buford at second, and Scourin at first. Robinson in right, Barry in center, and Nicholson in left. John the pitcher and Romano the catcher in this first game. Strike at the knee. A swing and a foul tip strike. Rolls to the right of the plate. Remember our sports show every night with a top name guest at 6 o'clock. All the baseball news, race results, every night at six. Swing and a miss at a fastball, he struck him out. Here is Lolich. Here is Ward coming over to talk with John. Yeah, I want to know what it is. Mickey Lolich, the batter. Swing and a ground ball. Hanson cuts in front of second and throws. Out, two gone. That was a low, slow chop over the pitcher's head. The slowness of the ball gave the shortstop the chance to make the move over right in front of second base when he grabbed it. Here's Wirt. Two out and nobody on. Third inning, no score in the ball game. Sox two hits, Detroit one. Pitchers first game, John and Lolich, both lefties. And the pitch. Swing and a 
fly ball into left center field that may go out of here, and it just gets over the fence. It's a home run for Wirt. Wirt hit one over the left field fence that just cleared the screen. That is the fourth home run this year given up by Tommy John, who got one up a little bit too high that time. And Wirt picked up his sixth homer. So Detroit goes ahead in the ball game, one to nothing. And a very high pop foul hit by Lumpy that Ward is coming over for but can't get. Wirt got that ball just over the 360 foot sign and it just did clear the screen. Henry's got a fractured hip. He's probably lost for the year. He'll be in the hospital at least three weeks. How do you not get it? They don't know. Surgery in a couple of days. We were talking about Casey Stengel and we have word now from our newsroom that in an injury, Stengel incurred a fractured hip. Ball, he walked him. So John, evidently shaken up by the home run, gives up a walk to Lumpy following Wirtz Homer. He had two out when he hit it. He's gonna bring up Cash. For Detroit, that was their 95th home run. For Wirt, it was his sixth. And the 11th home run off Sox pitching by Detroit. And Wirtz third. We were telling you yesterday, he's a troublesome little guy. And a high breaking pitch, it's a ball. Wirt hit his other home runs off Peters and Fisher. Washington three, Kansas City two in the eighth, LA two, Boston two in the fourth. Yankees a winner, three to nothing, the first final score on the board. First game of the doubleheader, Stottlemyre was the winner. There's a bouncing foul to the right. One and one. We've been here three days and they've hit seven. the batter. Slim left-hander Tommy John on the mound. The man over at first base. And a wild pitch. Lumpy goes to second base. So John bounced that ball into the dirt. He's got a ball two and a strike one count. He's in here talking to Romano. The umpire at the plate, Salerno, is getting a new supply of baseballs during the low. Lumpy has moved to second. John has given up homers to Killebrew, Orsino, Canop, and Wirt. And a good note, however, in all three, he was the winner of the ball game. Let's hope that holds true here today. Here's a hit to right that's going to score a run. Cash hit the ball right down the line. He's going to second base, and the throw, he's in there standing up. Detroit has a two-run lead. go ahead here two to nothing in the bottom of the third inning. Here's Al Kalin.
line coming in. Tommy John ready to fire, and it's high, a ball. John was getting the pitches all in the first two innings down low. Now he's pitching high. And a strike at the knee. The Tigers have two runs on three hits. The White Sox, no runs and two hits. He said again, that's a ball, low outside, and it's two and one. A ball two and a strike one count. Cincinnati and Houston are getting underway. They split a day-night doubleheader yesterday. Nuxall throwing a one-hitter, strike at the knee. Joe Nuxall, who joined Cincinnati ages ago, is having one of his best years. It's Quailer for Houston and Saturus for Cincinnati. Milwaukee and the Giants will play later. Curve and a foul off here to the right. And a ball two and a strike two count. John opposing Lolich in the first game of the double bill. And they have a two run lead here in the bottom of the third. Swing and a pop fly that's going to drop in, and the run is going to score. Single to right field by Kaline. here now, three to nothing. And boy, that was a handle hit, a pop-up in right field that was just out of the reach of Buford and Robbins. It's going to bring up Horton. Oh, we got a speed ball on first base. And here's a foul in the seats to the right. So Mickey Lolich and the Tigers have gone in front here three to nothing. Parton the batter with K-line over on first base. And a very high foul off here to the right. I think the wind is going to carry it into the stands, and it does. And it's a two-strike count for Horton. That was a very high foul to the right of the plate, but carried right into the stand. Ward is playing Horton near the line. Nick is very deep in left field, very in center field. It all, all this happened after two out and nobody on. John is set again, ready to fire. Here's a ground ball to the mound. Easy out. And it retires the side, but not before. Three runs scored. On a home run, two singles, and a walk. Three runs, three hits, one left. We are at the end of three at Detroit. And it is the Detroit Tigers, three runs on four hits, no errors. White Sox, no runs on two hits, no errors. Here is Scott.
Aaron who beat out a hit off of Wirtz's glove the first time up. Scouring the batter. And the pitch to him. Swing and a pop-up that Lumpy's going to get back in shallow right field. Two out. That's going to bring up Hanson. Two out and nobody on in the fourth inning. Hanson the first time was thrown out by Lumpy. Here is the pitch to him, and it's a strike at the knee. Mickey Lolich taking plenty of time between pitches. Here is a line drive to left center field. The shortstop almost got that ball. Now the center fielder, K-Line, kicks the ball for an error, and Hanson goes to second. He had stopped it first, but when K-Line, reaching down to pick up the ball, kicked it, he gets an error, and Hanson is on second base. That's going to bring up Nicholson. Double. They've changed it now and given Hanson a double. He had slowed down at first base and only started to run again when the center fielder kicked the ball, and he kicked it about 30 feet. But Ronnie gets a two-base hit. Nick the batter. And a foul off here to the right. Nicholson walked the first time up. That's hit number three. The Tigers have four, but they made three runs. Word hit a home run that started it in the third inning. Now he's set again. Here's a swing and a miss at a slow curve. Strike two. Top of the fourth inning. Lolich is getting all set again. Ball, it's high, and it's a ball one, strike two count. Let's get a break in here. This is the WCFL, Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. WCFL, the radio home of the Chicago White Sox at Marina City. It's 233 and 80 degrees in Chicago. A ball one and a strike two count for Nicholson. Strike three. Fastball on the inside corner. Call strike. No runs. One hit. And one left. At strikeout number five here for Mickey Lolich. We are in the middle of the fourth inning at Detroit. The Tigers three. The White Sox nothing. Big news from White Owl. A brand new, great new kind of cigar. The Demi Tip. What's different about the Demi Tip? Well, plenty. It's a little shorter than the long ones, a little longer than the short ones, a bit fatter than the thin ones, a lot milder than the strong ones, and much richer than the bland ones. And to top it off, it has a soft, white, pliable holder. Gives you a firm grip on a smoke that's as neat as it is satisfying. And satisfying the new Demi Tip is. It's made with fine-aged tobaccos that deliver the milder, smoother flavor of a true white owl. A smoke you don't have to inhale to enjoy. You'll find the Demo Tip in the familiar White Owl Royal Red and White Pack. But the Demo Tip shape, size, and tip are all brand new. The price? 
pack of five for just 28 cents. Pick up some. From soft white tip to last white puff, Demotip's a great new smoke from White Owl. Yes, big news from White Owl, the great new Demotip. In the second Yankee Cleveland game, it's Downing, a left-hander, and Stang, a right-hander. Here we move into the bottom of the fourth inning, Detroit leading three to nothing. Demeter, the leadoff man to be followed by Freehand and then by Euler. Tommy John is ready. And a strike in across the knee. Don Demeter was out the first time on a fly ball to right field. Here's a swing and a very high drive. It's going out of here into the upper deck. Tigers are really feasting on White Sox pitching. How many? That's eight homers they've hit here in three days. And this day has just started. Here is Freehand and a foul on the ground off to the right. So the boys better change their book on Detroit hitters. Freehand, the catcher. This is our eighth game with this club, and it's the fourth time they've hit two or more in one game. And a fastball, it's in close at the knee. It's one and one. This is the eighth game with Detroit, and it's the fourth time that they've hit two or more. Here is a hit to center field. Line single to center field. Going to bring up the shortstop, Boiler. Boiler was a strikeout victim the first time up. Polo is starting to throw. Here's a tap on the ground that's foul to the right. One strike. Euler is wearing one of those Earl Batty type of protective helmets. With sort of a metal ear flap over the left side. He bats right-handed. Wearing a dark blue one on his white uniform. And a bunt to the pitcher, throwing back to second, out over to first, no. Force out at second base. John DeHanson, safe at first. It's gonna bring up Lolich. First 81 game for this season, the White Sox pitching staff gave up 51 home runs. In the 12 games since the All-Star break, they've given up 23. That's a rate of 4-1 more than they gave up in the first half of the season. Milo's got an interesting home run note here. The first 81 games before the break, White Sox pitchers gave up only 52 home run balls. In the 12 games since the All-Star break, they've thrown 23 gopher balls 
That's a rate of about four to one more than they threw in the first half of the season per game. Well, here in the bottom of the fourth inning, they have a man on first base and Lolich the batter and the first pitch to him a ball. Strike call now, one and one. One and one. Kansas City and Washington are tied at three and three in the ninth inning. Ball is high. Ball two and strike one. A ball two and a strike one count. Strike. He pushed at the ball, a high outside pitch, and it's two and two. Two and a strike two count. Ball, it's low and outside, and it's ball three and strike two. Come on, let him punt it. Three and two. I'll walk him, put two men on here with one out. Throw over to first base. And it's back in time. The batter is Mickey Lolich. And he bunts foul for a strikeout. Hold up. Well, the umpire's claiming now. We thought now they're going to get an argument here. He claimed he swung at the ball. He took a soft swing at it rather than attempted to bunt it. If he bunts on the third strike, he's out. If he bunts it foul, automatically. Strike three call. He's out for sure now. So as Romano turned around with surprise with Lola still standing there and... Al Lopez and Barry standing up in the dugout and yelling, what's this? He said, well, he didn't push at that ball. He tried just to meet it and swung at it and fouled it. So he gets another swing. He then took strike three. Now the batter is Wirt, who started all this ruckus in the third inning when he hit a home run. Ball, it's low. Ball one. So Wirt and Demeter have hit home runs. Demeter sit safely in 14 of their last 15 games. And a smash. Great stop by Buford. Backhand on a ball that looked like a hit into center field. He fed the ball to Hansen, and it forced the runner coming down, Euler, and it retires the side. So in the inning, one run, two hits, one left. We're at the end of four at Tiger Town. The Tigers have four runs on six hits and no errors. The White Sox, no runs on three hits and no errors. Put the sticker right on my bag. I can't find a bad spot. You sure have travel. Yep. Salesman? I'm the White Owl Ranger. You've seen me on TV. Of course. The long, lean cigar, the big 10-gallon hat. I remember now. The White Owl Ranger has arrived. Yep. And I've arrived in a lot of towns telling folks how the new White Owl Ranger cigar is Texas tall and slim as a branding iron. Why, I travel so much, my wife don't know me anymore. I really believe in your work. Yep. You see, I know those White Owl tobaccos are aged in wood. I know how the Ranger stands above the crowd, and it's my duty to let everybody know. It's mighty hard work, back-breaking work, day and night work, but it's my duty to spread the word about these cigars. That's a fine attitude, Ranger. Well, where I come from, we believe a man should always speak right out and say what's on his mind. What would you say right now, Ranger? Just two words? Yeah? I'm tired. Remember the cigar. White Owl Ranger. Moving into the fifth inning, Detroit leading four to nothing, and Barry fouls one for a strike. Yeah. 
Left-hander Mickey Lolich has given up three hits. The Tigers have now made six. And a smash foul. Strike two. Nobody on and nobody out. But the Tigers are out in front here with three in the third and one in the fourth. Foul. Off here to the left underneath us and a two strike count. Well, the Sox have been in one of the worst slumps of the year. They've lost six straight. And the pitch. Swing and a foul into the grandstand to the right. No changes on the board. Now he's set again. A pitch to Barry. A little bit too close, a ball. One and two. This fellow's got a terrific fastball. He loves to get ahead of a hitter and then crowd him with that fastball and have him jump away only to have the umpire yell strike three. He did it on Nicholson last time and he just tried to do it on Barry. And the pitch change up and it's bounce foul to the left. Oh, when you're looking for a fastball and he gets you off stride with that change up slow curve looks as big as a basketball and you can't miss reaching for it and it's hard to get good wood on it. Boston three the Angels two in the fifth. And the pitch swing and a fly ball it's well tagged and it's gone out of here in the upper deck. Well, Barry hit a home run into the upper deck. Here is Tommy John. Well, he got good wood on that one. Now the pitch to John is high over his head, ball one. Well, it's too bad he didn't get that last time. We'd have had three runs because he was up with two men on. And he hit a mighty shot this time that sailed up into the upper deck in left center field. That's the 17th home run ball thrown by Lolich. Second by a scour. Make that remark. And scour. Third off of Lolich out of the six we've hit against this club. It's the third off of Lolich out of the six home runs that we've hit against them. Garen and Romano have also homered. Strike at the knee. Ball two, strike one. So Ken Berry leads off in the fifth inning with a long home run. Here is another strike right over the heart of the plate. Three and two. A ball two and a strike two count. Lolich fires, gets it low, a ball. He has walked just one man. That was in the second inning. Scourin let off with a single. Hanson bounced out and Nicholson walked. That's the only pass that Lolich has given in this game. Strike, struck him out. Fastball at the knee.
That is his sixth strikeout, and here's Buford. Don Buford has gone 0 for 2 against Lolich. Cincinnati nothing, used to nothing at the end of one. Buford a swing and a miss. St. Louis at L.A. getting underway. Milwaukee at San Fran getting underway. Pittsburgh two, the Cubs nothing in the fifth. Kansas City and Washington are still tied at three and three. Buford attempting to bunt, foul tip the ball, two strikes. The Tigers lead four to one. Lulich working on Buford with Robinson on deck. Buford swings and bloops a hit to right center. That drops in there. And here comes Floyd Robinson. Buford got a breaking pitch down in on the handle and just blooped it into right center field. Here is Robinson 0 for 2. New York Cleveland second game is underway. Minnesota at Baltimore, nothing up there. Robinson swings and hits a fly ball to left field, and Horton's going to get it right at the fence. Robinson hit a high fly ball to left field, and Horton caught it right at the fence. That's going to bring up Romano, one for two. Freehand calls time, and he's gone out to the mound. Well, Floyd Robinson went to the opposite field, hit a long ball, but Hart went back and caught it right near the auxiliary board. Pittsburgh two, the Cubs one in the sixth. Mets eight, the Phillies one in the ninth. Since he nothing, used to nothing in the second. Romano backed up and the ball hit the bat for a foul strike. The batter is John Romano. Lolich is getting set out there again. High fastball. Well, they not only have to worry about Lolich, but about Denny McLean, who has won seven straight. Worry about him in the second game. Romano takes a changeup across the letters for a call strike. A ball one, strike two count. Here is the pitch to Romano, and it's low for a ball. Two and two. Ball two, strike two. The Tigers have had a terrific Saturday record. They haven't lost a game on a Saturday. But their Sunday record has been poor. Swing and a miss. Romano struck out. One run on two hits and one left, and that is strikeout number seven. And so in the middle of the fifth inning at Tiger Stadium, the score, Detroit four runs, six hits, 
White Sox have one run on five hits. All right, gentlemen. Uh, just gentlemen, we at White Owl are introducing a new cigar, the Demi Tip. Yeah. yeah. Now, now the Demi Tip is a little shorter than the long cigars and a little longer than the short ones. Right. A bit fatter than the thin ones, a lot milder than the strong ones. And it has a dip here. Uh, right. Right. Now each Demi Tip has its own neat white pliable holder. Mm -hmm. But our problem, gentlemen, is how to dramatize a cigar that's a little shorter than the long ones and a little longer than the short mm -hmm. ones. Right, Carruthers. Now how? Uh, boys, will you come in? Why those fellows are identical twins. Ah, uh, no. PJ, actually Milton here is the world's tallest midget, while his brother Hilton is the world's smallest giant. Oh, Get it? Yeah. Now Milton is a little taller than the short ones. Mm -hmm. Hilton is a little shorter than the tall ones. Mm -hmm. They make a tour demonstrating the new white owl demi tips. And what do you think, gentlemen? Oh yes. Well, we think, Carruthers, that you need a rest. A uh, short rest, eh? A little longer than a short one. Mm -hmm. Remember the cigar, new white owl demi tip. We're at the halfway point of the first game at Detroit. The Tigers are leading four to one. Bob Elson saying goodbye now for a little while, and here is Milo Hello. Thank you, Bob, and hello again, everybody. As we go into the bottom of the fifth inning, Lumpy will be leading it off. He struck out and he's walked. When he walked in the third, he scored their second run. So Lumpy, the left-hand batter, facing the left-hand pitcher Tommy John. The Tigers are leading with a score of four to one. They got three in the third after two out. Added another in the fourth. They've played a little long ball again today. Wirt and Demeter. That's a strike. It's called to Lumpy. So the Tigers have been hot. They've been hitting homers. They've hit eight against the Sox here in three days. And this day is only a fourth of the way through. There is a foul to the left side. Strike two to Lumpy. Cash will be next and then Kaline. Sox got one of the four back and a home run by Barry in the fifth. Bolo is throwing again in the bullpen. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he struck out Lumpy on three pitches. Strikeout number six by Tommy John. One away, and here is Cash. Called out on strikes in the first. In the third, he doubled. Drove in their second run. Later scored their third run. This is Norm Cash. Tommy John looking in to get the sign from Romano. They play cash deep and around to the right. There's a swing and a foul. Going to go right over the edge of the Sox dugout on the right side. And it's strike one. As soon as Cash completes his turn at bat, we'll be getting in a break here as we approach 3 o'clock in Detroit. Left-hander John fires. Swinging. There's a line drive to Hanson. A little soft line drive. Two gone. Let's get that break in right here. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox. Baseball Network. You're listening to WCFL, the voice of labor at Marina City, Chicago. 81 degrees in Chicago at two and a half minutes before three o'clock. K-Line flied to left the first time up. Last time he singled and drove in their fourth run. The first pitch to him here is a strike and it's 0-1. K-Line the batter. Nobody on and two away. Horton has moved on deck. Tigers have out hit the Sox six to five, outscored them four to one. Here's the pitch. Fastball down low, and it's one and one. So it's even to the great Al K line as he bats here in the fifth inning. Tigers hit John with a three in the third, added one in the fourth. They've won the first two games of the series. Swing and a foul back. Tommy had taken something off his breaking ball there, and K line fouled it back. It's one and two. Cisco beats Polinski as the Mets try to make Casey Stengel feel a little better in the hospital. Mets eight, fills one. Outside, K-Line almost reached for it, but let it go by. It's two and two with two out. Sixth inning, Pittsburgh two, the Cubs one. Second inning, Cincinnati, Houston scoreless. Here's the pitch. Swinging and fouling way up to the right side. The pitchers have been posted on the coast. Simmons for the Cardinals. And Austin for the Dodgers. Here's a swing and a smash foul between the coach's box and the third base bag. Still two and two. For Milwaukee. They're going with Sadowski at San Francisco. The Giants are using Bob Shaw. Here's 
the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a chop to the mound. John has it, turns, throws to the moose. Three up and three down. So John responds here with a three-man inning. The first time he's been able to do that since the first inning. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Our ball game is now at the end of five. Michael Hamilton and Bob Elson with the White Sox story from Detroit. After five, Tigers four runs, six hits. White Sox one run, five hits. Friends, do you know that there are still some people who insist that all beers are alike? But if you're a Budweiser drinker, that probably causes you to smile to yourself a little. You know there is a difference. And a difference you can see in that clean white head of foam. A difference you can taste in the extra smoothness that comes from Beechwood Aging, a Budweiser exclusive. And a difference that comes from natural carbonation, just letting the tiny beer bubbles happen instead of pumping them in. No need for you to go to the trouble of comparing Bud to other beers because you know there just is no comparison. Sure, all this costs a lot of money and takes more time, too. But when it comes to making the king of beers, well, let's just say it's worth it. A great product, world-famous Budweiser. Enjoy it often. And remember, baseball and Budweiser make a truly unbeatable combination. Sixth inning, Ward will lead it off. He has struck out and flied out. Pitch to him is a strike call. He gave him a good curveball. Feet backed away, thought it was coming inside, but it broke right through the strike zone, and it is strike one. Scour next, and then Hanson. Sixth inning. Sox need to peck away a little bit here now. They are down four to one. Strike call. A good fastball this time. Oh, and two. Ward had five for five yesterday, but here today against Lolich, 0 for 2. Swing and a miss, 0 for 3. Strikeout number eight. Well, let's see. Struck out Buford, Romano, Ward twice, Nicholson, Barry, and the pitcher twice. Here is Scourin with a single and a pop-up. The Moose is one for two as he stands in here now to face Lolich. Lefty fires, swing and a miss. Ball gets by Lolich on the return throw from freehand, and the shortstop Oiler trots over to get it. Oh, and one to the Moose. Said one of the five Sox hits. There's a curveball that hit him. And Scourin is trotting to first base. The Moose hit by a pitch ball. Puts a runner on with one gun. And it brings up Ronnie Hanson, who bounced to second in the second inning. Last time up in the fourth, Hanson got a double. Came with two out, and they weren't able to move him around. Sox only run came on a long home run by Barry to lead off the fifth. We threatened in the second inning. Runners at first and third and only one out and did not score as Barry struck out and so did Tommy John. Look to first. Here's the pitch to Ronnie. Low inside a ball and it's 1-0. and oh. Fifth inning, Boston 3, LA 2. Yankees jumped on Cleveland for two in the first. They won the opener. Three to nothing. Now Lolich from the stretch. Down low again, and it's ball two. Two nothing to Hanson. Good crowd here today, as the Sox and Tigers have a Sunday doubleheader, and these Tigers have been hot. Now from the belt, high and away, and it moves to three and zero on Hanson. Well, a left-hand pitcher and a power-hitting right-hand batter, and in a ballpark that's a hitter's park, Lolich not giving Hanson too much good to look at. And down low on him, then went high and away. Here's the 3-0 pitch. He walked him on four pitches. So hit batsman in a walk, puts runners at first and second. 
Hansen trotting down. Second pass issued by Lolich, and it brings up Nicholson, who has walked and been called out on strike. So now Big Nick steps in. Going to get some activity. Terry Fox, a right-hander, is going to throw in a Tiger bullpen. The two runners on and one out. The seventh hitter coming up now and a possibility of a pitcher coming to bat in the inning. Ray Berries is trotting down the bullpen. We're going to see if we're going to get Bolo throwing again. We'll get some activity definitely and it looks like it'll be Bobby Locker now. That's right. It's Bob Locker. There's a swing and a miss. Had a terrific cut at that ball but he missed it and it's strike one. Nicholson looking for his first hit today, and this would be quite a spot to get it. Runners at first and at second. One out. Sox trail by three as they bat in the sixth. The look by Lolich. Now the pitch to Nicholson. Check swing high and away. Ball one and strike one. So right now both bullpens are busy. Right hand is throwing for both. Fox for the Tigers. Locker for the Sox. And Mickey Lolich. After one out, he struck out Ward, then Scourn was hit by a pitch. Hanson walked. Now it's Nicholson, another right-hand batter. The 1-1 one -one to Nick. Inside. He twisted away from that one. A lot of the fans thought that he was swinging at it. Actually, he's just his body moving away. And it's ball two, strike one. The Moose takes that lead at second. Over at first, it's Ronnie Hanson. Lowlich stretches from the belt. Here it is. Swing and a line drive. Left center. Base hit. Here comes the Moose. He's going to score. The throw will come towards second, and Hanson's into third. A line drive single into left center. Produces a run. Scourin comes around with run number two. Hanson races the third. Big Nick gets an RBI single. The hits are now even at six apiece. Now here's Barrio at a home run the last time up. Four to two, Tigers leading. And Mickey Lolich in this sixth inning. They went to Washington and ran into a buzzsaw. That's three in a row they've lost there. Now the stretch by Lolich, runners first and third, the pitch to Barry. Swing and a miss, he got him way out in front of a let-up curve ball, and it's strike two. There's one out, a fly ball can give you a run, a base hit can keep an inning going. Sox trailing by two, at one time it was four to nothing. Sox got a run in the fifth and a run here in the sixth. Barry has a chance to drive at another run if we can just get Hanson in off third. Second base is open. Nicholson's at first. They both lead away as the left-hander stretches and looks over. Now the pitch to Barry. Swinging and a base hit into right field. Here comes Hanson. And as Demeter charges that ball, Nicholson takes a turn at second, but good thing he didn't try to go to third. Demeter was ready to fire that ball. Hanson is in. Run number three. Nicholson has moved to second. Barry has come up with his second hit in a row. He's also driven in another run. Brianne is out on the mound talking to Lolich. It's now four to three, Tigers leading. So it all started after a strikeout to Ward. Scourin was hit by a pitch. Hanson walked. Nicholson singled in Scourin. Barry has singled in Hanson. And here comes Hicks. Hicks will bat for Tommy John. So the Sox have climbed back within a run. And here comes Charlie Dressen. This is exactly what Al Lopez wanted here. He, there's Smokey getting up off the bench. He brought Hicks, a right-hand batter out, to force, to force Dressen here to change pitchers. 
Cleveland just got four in the first to go ahead of the Yankees, four to two. That's all for Lulich. So Mickey Lulich is gone at Detroit. And Hicks will be replaced by Smokey Burgess. Terry Fox coming on. Boy, he's been brilliant, this guy. So Mickey Lolich worked five and a third innings. He was in trouble in the second, in the fifth, and now here in the sixth they've gotten to him for two runs. Five and a third innings, three runs altogether, although the two men on could be charged to him if they score. Given up seven hits. He walked two and struck out eight, so despite his strikeout ball today, Lolich has been knocked out. Fox's base on ball strikeout ratio is not a good one for a reliever. 22 walks, 17 strikeouts, has thrown three gopher balls in 42 innings. The Smokey Burgess. Come on, Smokehouse. The old Smokehouse is coming out. Well, he almost poked one out here the other night, Friday night, with two men on. He just missed that foul pole by inches. So Terry Fox has been announced. Fox has won four and lost three. Earned run average, 2.30. He's had four saves to go with his four victories. This is his 26th appearance. And Fox comes in here with Nicholson at second, Barry at first, and Smokey Burgess. Well, here's another chance. Every time he's come up now, of course, since getting 107 at New York, you know that the next one he gets sets Major League history. The most pinch hits in a career. Who would this be a spot to get it? We had the tying run out at second base. We can just get Big Nick around. So Smokey Burgess to face Terry Fox. Bobby Locker is finished throwing in the bullpen. He'll be our new pitcher when we go to the bottom of the sixth. Terry Fox looking in to get the sign from freehand. Smokey Burgess waiting. Teammates at first and second. The look. The pitch on the way. Stir right gets called. An off-speed breaking pitch. Caught the outside corner to Smokey. And it's 0-1. So the Sox, who were down by four after the first four innings here today, have now climbed back within a run. Ball game is in the sixth. Lolich is gone. Fox is on. Nishwitz and Navarro are throwing in the bullpen. Terry Fox drops the arms, checks the runners. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. He just spun one right down off his instep. And it's strike two to Burgess. So Fox has moved down in front of the count here. Smokey Burgess back here talking with the umpire now. Freehand walks about 10 feet in front of the plate and hollers something out to Fox. Nicholson is at second. He drove in a run with a hit. Barry is at first. He had an RBI single. Scourin and Hanson have scored the runs. So the Sox with a chance to get right back in here now. Fox shakes off freehand. Shakes him off again. He's ready. The 0-2 pitch. Swinging. There's a liner down the left field line. It is a hit. It's going to go to the corner. Here comes Nicholson. Score tied. Here comes Barry. The Sox lead. And they got to stop the game here now and give Smokey that ball. They're going to stop the game and give Smokey the ball. Here's Ed Rungi getting it now. They're saving the ball for Major League history for Smokey Burgess. And he drives in two runs with it. And the Sox go ahead for the first time 5-4. to four. And they're now making the announcement on Smokehouse as he gets the double. And it's Pinch hit number 108, and listen to the hand for Smokey Burgess here in Detroit. Not only that, uh, Milo, there were two strikes on him when he hit that ball. So this guy is one of the most amazing hitters we've ever seen. He just doubled into the corner with two strikes and no balls called, and boy, was that a beautiful hit. 
Sox go ahead for the first time in this game, five to four. Burgess got that liner down the left side and rolled to the corner beyond the bullpen. It chased Nicholson in with a tying run. It got Barry across with a lead run. Burgess himself is now at second. Here's the pitch to Buford. Down low, a ball, and it's 1-0. Oh, oh, Smokey. Smokey Burgess. Too bad we can't take Smokey to the London Chop House tonight. <laughs> well, somebody ought to set up something for that guy. Here's the pitch. Into the dirt at the catcher's feet, and it's ball two. A four-run sixth has put the Sox on top of Detroit. Yep, thank you. Ball two and no strikes. Burgess the batter. Out at second base with that double and little Don Buford in the batter's box with a two-nothing count. He's had one hit. The pitch by Fox. Outside, and it's ball three. Well, maybe that pinch double by the smokehouse will ignite this ball club now. Show some of these youngsters. What the oldsters can do, and Burgess has really been something, hasn't he? Major league record for Burgess, and he does it in a White Sox uniform. Here's the pitch. Stir right, and it's three and one. That ball has been put back into the clubhouse now. Smokey will never let that one get away. But in 10 years, how many of them do you suppose they'll be around that say that was the one he hit? Here's the 3-1 pitch. Outside, he walked him. Buford gets a base on ball. Walk number one by Fox, and it's walk number three given to the Sox in the ball game. And here comes Robbie, flied out, bounced out, and flied out again. The last time, he sent Horton to the auxiliary scoreboard in deep left. Now here comes Charlie Dressen. With Robinson coming up, he's probably going to go to the left-hander, Nishwitz. Although yesterday he brought Nishwitz in to face a left-hander, Ward, and Ward proceeded to pop one. And it gave Ward five for five at the time. So Charlie Dressen is going to his bullpen again, and that's who it'll be, Ron Nishwitz. We faced only one batter yesterday. That was Ward, and Pete came up with a hit. So you have Burgess at second, Buford at first. Four runs are in. There's still only one out. I ample opportunity here to still have a bigger inning, and the Sox are leading five to four. Remember tomorrow night, the Cubs will be at Sox Park for the boys' benefit. Wonderful cause. Try to get out and see that one. A lot of the Cub fans come out for that, of course, because... A lot of the good Cub fans don't have a chance to. Here's Cater going into run for Burgess. Danny Cater running for Burgess. Here's another hand now for Smokey Burgess. All the boys in the dugout are up to greet him. Look at those handshakes. <laughs> We were saying tomorrow night, a lot of the Cub fans, of course, get a chance to come out and see a night game, and this is a big game. It's important to the boys' baseball program in the Chicagoland area. Worthy cause, and it's good to see the two teams play, and that'll be tomorrow night at White Sox Park. Then we'll go on to Cleveland for three. Then Friday night, we'll be home against these Tigers. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Sunday doubleheader, and a Monday night game. That's right, all of those games with Detroit. Then the Yankees come in, followed by Cleveland and Washington. So as you can tell, with those teams and those dates, that's a big homestand. You want to be getting your tickets. In fact, you can for the next 40 minutes at Sox Park, 35th and Shields. Box office open for your convenience today. So Ron Nishwitz has come on here in relief of Fox, who faced only two batters. He gave up a double to Burgess, and he walked Buford. Nishwitz is the third... Tiger pitcher in this first game. And you know, the Sox pitcher has been lifted, and Bobby Locker is going to be our new pitcher in the bottom of the sixth. Nishwitz is ready. Robinson steps in. 
Robbie's gone 0 for 3 today. He's the eighth man to bat in the inning. Four runs are in, and the Sox lead 5 to 4. Now Ron Nishwitz getting ready to work to Floyd Robinson. Here's the look, and now the pitch. Curveball outside and low, ball one. One oh eight that sets a record, beats Red Lucas. Ball one and no strikes to Robinson. Cater remembers out running for Burgess at second, Buford's at first. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss at a good curveball, and it's one and one. A ball and a strike. Danny Cater, who's still heavily taped and still sore, but uh, is able to run. Not able to swing a bat, however. A ball and a strike to Robbie. Trying to keep it going here in the sixth as we go on top for the first time today. An off-speed breaking pitch a little high, and it's ball two, strike one. Robbie almost went after that one, but he held up, and it's two and one. We were down four to nothing at the end of four. A Barry homer in the fifth made it four to one. Four runs in this inning, and it's five to four White Sox. And Smokey Burgess, one of the heroes in this inning, and what a way to get that record-breaking pinch hit. A double that drove in two runs. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swinging and a smash. Look out, Donald Gutteridge. Boo! <laughs> Can't have anything happening to him. I won't get my laundry done. The little laundry man at first, Don Gutteridge. Ball two and strike two. A lot of folks in the Chicagoland area, you know, it's a, a too bad a drive over here. Now, and a lot of them came over for the weekend. It's a ball outside, and it didn't miss by much. Robbie almost reached across to get it. But let it go by, and it just dropped off the corner at the knees in his ball three, strike two. Full count now to Robbie. Get him on and load him up for Romano and have an inning. You can tell her... A lot of those folks from the Chicagoland area are right down here below us because you can hear them yelling, come on, Robbie. Turns and throws, and it's not close. In fact, it almost looked for a second like Euler had missed the play and was late covering. And Nishwitz realizing that and just lobbed the ball back. He'd have let that ball go in when he usually would have in that situation. He'd throw it in the center field. All right, full count. Runners first and second. Here's the pitch. Ball four, and the bases are loaded in Detroit with White Sox. Cater has gone to third. Buford is walking to second. Robinson is on first, and here comes Charlie Dressen. And Nishwitz, for the second day in a row, looks like he's going to face exactly one batter. Yesterday he came in, Ward hit him. Today he comes in and he walks Robinson. And he was brought in both times to face a left-hand batter, and now we're going to get Navarro. Julio Navarro. He was in yesterday as well. Two walks in a row after Burgess's double. Romano will be the batter, and he will be the ninth man in the inning to go to the plate for the White Sox. So Charlie Dressen, there's really a mutton Jeff out there now. Dressen by Nishwitz. Nishwitz is a big fella. And Dressen, of course, short especially the way the players are today. Now Navarro has come on. Navarro worked one-third of an inning yesterday. He came on and got scouring to hit into a force play to end the game. So Romano now has a chance to give us some daylight. It's five to four White Sox. There's a man on every base. There's only one out. A long fly ball can give you a run. A base hit can possibly give you two and keep an inning going. And with a right-hander on the mound and nobody throwing into bullpen, and Ward is due up next. So Romano standing right there, swinging two bats and watching Navarro throw him in. Ramos is pitching at Cleveland. 
Cleveland leading four to two. There in the second game, Stottlemyre and the Yankees won the opener three to nothing. Stottlemyre won his 11th today. Realize that fella hasn't been in the big leagues a year yet. See, last year when he came up, he won nine. So he's won 20 ball games, and he hasn't been in the league a year. Came up in August last year. All right, we're ready to go. Romano's the batter. Navarro ready to throw his first pitch in relief, and here it comes, and he almost hit him. It's ball one. A one nothing count to John Romano, who was single, bounced out, and he struck out. Sox on top. Here's the one nothing to Romano. Almost hit him again, and it's ball two. There's nobody throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Navarro is the fourth Tiger pitcher in the inning. Lolich, the starter, was knocked out. Fox came on. Nishwitz, and now Navarro. The 2-0 to Romano. Swinging. High fly ball. Deep left. This ball is gone. It's a grand slammer for John Honey Romano. And the White Sox have come back with a vengeance. John Romano just hit a towering drive way back with a man on every base. Oh, what a blast. And look at the reception committee for Romano. It was Cater running for Burgess, scoring first. Then Buford. Then Robbie. And John Romano hit a towering fly ball. That went over the 370 sign and about five rows into the lower seats. Score is now nine to four. And the White Sox are leading. Here's Ward, the tenth man to bat in the inning, and it's down low a ball. Oh, he kissed one. Four RBIs for Big John. There's a ball inside to Ward. So, Bob, there's another one of the situations where you wonder about right-hander, left-hander business. That's right. Oh, boy, have we been waiting for this for days. <laughs> Seems like months. They've scored eight runs here in this inning. And we told you about the Tigers haven't lost on Saturdays. They have a rough time on Sunday. They're 4 and 15. Here's a line drive hit. Ward stings one into right center. Ward gets his sixth tip in two days. Number two off Navarro, number 10 for the Sox. Ward's first hit today, and here comes the Moose. Now Sherry is throwing in the bullpen. Scour and singled, popped up and hit by a pitch. He scored one run. Scored nine to four. And there's still only one out. Here's the stretch and the pitch to the Moose. That hit his bat, it'll cost him a foul strike and a knock. Freehand, back on his heels. There is one out. Ward struck out to start the inning. The scoreboard operator doesn't realize what the plate umpire is trying to tell him. There's no out on the big board. He's trying to tell him that there's an out in the inning. Now he's got it. Here's the pitch to Scourin. There's a swing and a foul up to the right. Let's get in a break right here. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. This is WCFL, the voice of labor, Marina City, Chicago. 330 in Chicago, 81 at Midway, 85 at O'Hare, 77 downtown. A big eight up there looks mighty pleasing. Nine to four, White Sox leading. The stretch and the look, the pitch to Scourin. That's a little wide, and it's a ball one and a strike two count. Boy, it takes a ball game like this to loosen everybody up. 
Sox have now scored nine runs on ten hits, and they were down one time four to nothing. Here's the pitch. There's a little bloop down the left field line. It's going to drop in for a hit. Navarro to the stretch, kicks and fires. Inside to Hanson. Ball two. Two nothing to Hanson. Sox have had six hits in this inning and have scored eight runs. The two big blows as far as features, a pinch double by Burgess to set a major league record for pinch hitters, and a grand slam homer by Romano. Boy, was Romano overdue to get that big blow. Picked a great spot to get it here today. That's a ball, and it's 3-0. John Romano getting his seventh home run. Now has 20 runs batted in. Oh, if you could just get that kind of a blast out of Romano a little more often, get him going in the last two months of this season, it really helped. Three nothing. Where does he put him? Strike call. And the applause is not exactly the kind that a pitcher likes to hear. They know that it's a mockery sort because he's been having trouble. Ball three, strike one. Hanson waiting. Here's the pitch. Swinging, and he pops it up. Shortstop Euler, two gone. They finally get that second out. Here's Nicholson, the 13th man to bat in the inning. Nicholson has walked, struck out, singled in this inning, and drove in a run and later scored a run himself. Nicholson scored the tying run when Burgess got that double, and then Barry ran right in behind him with the lead run. Right now it's 9-4, to four, White Sox. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a high pop, short right center, Lumpy out, K-line coming in, Demeter coming in, who's going to get it? Lumpy finally does, and he almost collides with Demeter. Lumpy gets the put out on Nicholson. Thirteen men bat in the inning. Sox get eight runs. On one, two, three, four, five, six hits. No errors. Two men are left. We are now in the middle of the sixth, and it's the White Sox leading. White Sox nine, Tigers four. Pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair of six packs. Pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair of six packs. Take two from the beechwood tree, my bud. Right now, you'll see a beechwood tree at the store to remind you to pick a pair of Budweiser six-packs. This time of year, it's smart to have a good supply of cold Budweiser on hand. Why the beechwood tree? <laughs> that's because Budweiser is the only beer in America that's beechwood aged. So, beechwood aged Budweiser, beechwood tree, pick a pair. Pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair. Beechwood tree, I bud. Take home two. Smart way to buy. Pick a pair, pick a pair, pick a pair of six packs. It's worth it. It's Budweiser. Bye, bud. Bobby Locker is coming on. Second appearance of the series against this club. Locker's making his 33rd appearance. He's 4-2. He was the loser here Friday night. He's pitched almost 58 innings. Earned run average of a 2.33. Giving up 40 hits. Walked 16. Struck out 42. Has thrown three home run balls. Horton, who has singled and bounced to the mound, will lead it off in the sixth inning. Bobby Locker in relief of Tommy John. 
Locker winding. Here's the first pitch to Horton. Strike a bullseye. 0 and 1. Cleveland leading the Yankees 7 to 2 as they go to the third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul right side. Out of play. In the eighth inning, Boston 5 and the Angels 3. Second inning, Giants and Braves scoreless. Fourth inning, Houston and Cincinnati scoreless. Jackson and Culp in game two at New York. The Mets won the opener in a big way. Seventh inning, Pittsburgh two, the Cubs won. You're right up to date. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a sinker. Strikeout number seven against the Tigers in the game. Number one for Locker, of course, the first man that he's faced. Now here is Demeter, who had a fly ball to right in the second. In the fourth inning, he led off with a home run against Tommy John. So Tommy John who was belted from pillar to post in the third and fourth, left this game with a lead. Here's the pitch. That's down low a ball. It's 1-0. Freehand will be next. Pitch on the way. Swing and a foul. A ball and a strike. Washington beat Kansas City again, 4-3. Or well, Kansas City will be glad to get away from Washington. They've really been giving it going over over there. The 1-1, swinging. High fly, curving toward the foul pole, and it is a home run. It curved right into that foul pole, and it's a home run for Demeter. His second home run of the game. Nine to five. In his last two times at bat, Demeter has knocked one out of here. Here is Freehand. Demeter's third home run in three days. He hit his other off Bazard and John. A strike called here to Freehand. He has struck out and he's single. There's a chop toward the hole, but Hanson goes to his right. Here's the long throw. He got him on a close play. Nice play by Ronnie Hanson. Went far to his right, back into the hole. Had to fire that ball. Had to get something on it and get it over there. It's two away. McAuliffe will bat for Euler. So they're sending McAuliffe out. Dick McAuliffe just being announced. He's batting 294. He's had 93 hits. Leads the club. 13 doubles, 6 triples, 11 homers. Has 38 runs batted in. Nobody on. Two gone. A run in on Demeter's second homer of the day and his third of the series. Here's the pitch. Down low a ball and it's 1-0. Sherry continues to throw in the Tiger bullpen. If McAuliffe gets on, we'll probably see the pinch hitter for Navarro. Charlie Dressen used four pitchers in the sixth. And the Sox scored eight runs. Down low, ball two. Bobby Locker. Threw a home run ball to freehand here Friday night. Inside, almost hit him in the elbow, and it's ball three. Three nothing count on McAuliffe, pinch hitter, batting for the shortstop Euler. The 3 0 pitch, he walks McAuliffe on four pitches. 
Walk number one by Locker. And that's the second. Bullpen. It's a nine to five score, but the Sox need this game in the worst way. They've lost six in a row. Gates Brown is coming up. Looks like Wilhelm going to throw. That's it. It's Gates Brown. And here comes Al Lopez to the mound, trotting out. But he comes out this quickly. He's not coming out with the thought of taking him out of the ball game. He's going to come out here to talk with him now, along with Romano, because I don't think Locker's ever pitched to Brown before. Brown is hitting 202. He's had three homers, four doubles, driven in 15 runs. So Romano, Locker, and Lopez complete their conference in a hurry. Wilhelm is throwing in the bullpen. McAuliffe is at first. Gates Brown is the batter. Two out. Sox leading nine to five. That's down low. Five in a row thrown by Locker. Getting that ball just a little low here. He did it on McAuliffe. Now he starts off with one low on Brown. Here's the stretch pitch. Down low again. Only about a half a foot off the ground. And it's ball two. So Sherry will be the new pitcher when we go to the seventh. Bobby Locker, who's been Mr. Dependable in July, had trouble here Friday night and is having trouble right now. He almost, did he hit him or not? He backed away in a hurry, dropped the bat, and no, he has not been hit, and it's ball three. So Locker is struggling here. He walked McAuliffe on four pitches. He's now missed the mark three straight pitches on Gates Brown. And word is due up next. Sign goes the bullpen for Wilhelm to really start firing. Strike call to get it on the inside corner. And it's ball three and strike one. Locker'd like to get this fella and get out of this inning. Here's the pitch. Stir right, and it's three and two. A three-two pitch on a powerful left-hand batter. Two are out. Runner at first going. There's a swing and a foul to the right side. He hit that one right off of his left instep, and it's still three and two. A couple of the games on the coast have gone to the third inning. It's the Cardinals one and the Dodgers nothing in the third. It's the Giants one and the Braves nothing in the third. Still two to one Pirates in the seventh at Wrigley. Cincinnati's taken a one to nothing lead over Houston as they go to the fifth. And right here in Detroit, it's the Sox leading nine to five. And it's the bottom of the sixth inning. Runner going, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Boy, there's a big strikeout. And it kept Locker from being lifted, too. His second strikeout, it's the eighth of the game against the Tigers. And in the inning, they get one run on one hit, a home run by Demeter. No errors, a walk, one left. We're now at the end of six. Michael Hamilton and Bob Elson with the action from Detroit. First game of a doubleheader in Detroit today. The six inning totals. White Sox, nine runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Tigers, five runs, seven hits, and no errors. You know, even the great players of baseball would tell you that the great game of baseball is won by team effort. And friendly Bob Adams will tell you in a minute that it's teamwork that makes general finance the real big favorites whenever it comes to telephone loans. Find men and women working together to solve your money worries and to do it quickly and easily. And these money experts make loan by phone really possible. Just call friendly Bob Adams at General Finance today. Yes, even though it is a Sunday. And then relax while the gang goes to work and they set up all the details. Whenever you stop by tomorrow at any one of our 50 General Finance offices in Chicagoland, your money will be ready and waiting. 
Remember, Friendly Bob has a whole team of experts just waiting for your call and to give you immediate service on a loan. And over three, two oh, two oh. Our ball game is going to the seventh. Sherry is the new Tiger pitcher. He's their fifth hurler today. And Sherry, as he comes on for the 28th time, has won three and he's lost four. Earn run average of a 3.32. He's thrown three home run balls in 57 in the third inning. Base on ball strikeout ratio even, 26 each. 52 hits in 57 innings. The pitch to Barry is a ball and it's 1-0. Cleveland, seven, Yankees, four, third inning. Swing and a miss by Barry. Barry homered in the fifth inning and singled and drove in a run in the sixth inning. They'll be starting at Baltimore in about a half an hour. That's a 5-15 start there today for some reason. There's a swing and a miss. Ball one and strike two to Barry. Barry's two for three. Seventh inning, game one. Sox leading nine to five. There's a chop to short. McCullough fires across to Cash, and they get Barry by a step and a half. You remember McCullough was a pinch hitter in the sixth, and they kept him right in the lineup to play short. Now here's Bobby Locker. Bob Locker will bat, but nobody on in front of him and one away. Facing Sherry, former Dodger, of the heroes of the 59 series against the Sox. That's a strike right at the knee. And it's 0 and 1. They've gone to the ninth at Fenway, Boston 5, and the Angels 3. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Check swing into the dirt, count even at a ball and a strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing, and they miss. Ball one and strike two. Buford will be next. Sox have out hit the Tigers 11-7, outscored them 9-5. Burgess and Romano had some big hits in that eight-run sixth. That's a ball, and it's two and two. Eight runs in the sixth inning for the White Sox. Burgess had a pinch hit double. It set the Major League pinch hit record and also drove in two run. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Number one for Sherry. And number nine in the ball game against the Sox. Here is Buford, struck out, bounced to the mound, singled, walked, scored one run. He was on base when Romano unloaded the grand slammer off Navarro in the sixth inning. Batting left against the right-hander Sherry and the pitch to him. Overhand curve is right through the middle and it's 0-1. Cubs may have something going in the seventh inning at Wrigley. Pirates are using their third pitcher in the inning. Look out, he threw right at his head. Buford has to duck down in a hurry to get out of the way of that one. And it's even at a ball and a strike. A 1-1 count. Robinson's yelling out at Sherry. He's sticking up for his buddy Buford in this situation. Robbie's yelling out there, and now Salerno is going out here. Salerno's telling him just to throw the ball over the plate because Robinson's really chirping out there to Sherry, making an accusation, I imagine, after the last pitch that Sherry was throwing at Buford. Here's a bunt, and Buford right there, I think, was bunting, hoping that Sherry would have to come over and cover. A little discussion going down there. 
And he low bridged him. Then Robbie started yelling at him from the on deck circle. Ball one and strike two. Here's the pitch. That's a let up outside, and it leveled it at 2 2. There are two out. Barry bounced out. Locker struck out. Nobody on in the Sox seventh, and the Sox have a four run lead. After being down at one time, four to nothing. Into the dirt, and it's a full count. The Sox sent 13 men to the plate in the sixth and scored eight runs. Sherry gets the sign from Freehand. Now he's ready. The 3 2 pitch. Strike three call. Buford's been called out on strike. Number 10 against the Sox. Number two for Sherry. And he faces only three men in his first inning of relief today. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And now a Tiger stretch in the seventh at Detroit. In the middle of the seventh, White Sox nine. Tigers five. You know, General Finance is one of the top baseball sponsors in America. They've been identified with our White Sox broadcasts for many, many years. And as you know, they serve as the exclusive sponsor of all the ball games that Milo and I bring you from down in Florida for the whole month of March. Well, it costs a lot of money doing those games down there, traveling around the state, lines in all those ballparks. But General Finance is a service organization all the way, and they feel that this is another service from an old friend, the General Finance Loan Company. Remember, they're friendly people, and when you're concerned with a money problem, you need a friend. Remember that friendly Bob Adams is standing by today and every day to be of service to you, to you, to you, to anybody who has any kind of a money problem, large or small. So if you need help, Bob Adams and General Finance are just as close as your telephone. We're going into the bottom of the seventh now, and a crowd settling down at Tiger Stadium. It'll be the top of the order, Don Ward, Jerry Lumpy, and Norm Cash, to face the right-hand reliever, Bobby Locker. Wirt has bounced out, homered, and hit into a force play. Had a hit taken away on that force play on a very fine defensive gem by Buford. That's a ball inside. Wilhelm is already throwing in the bullpen because it's nine to five. Stocks have lost six in a row, and Lopez wants somebody ready. Down low, and it's ball two. Locker got himself in trouble in the sixth. He gave up a homer to Demeter. He walked McCullough. The Cubs only got one run, and that tied the Pirates at 2-2 as they go to the eighth at Wrigley Field. Now the line by Locker, the 2-0 to Don Wirt. Outside, and it's ball three. The Locker digging himself another hole here in a hurry. Now Lopez and Ray Berry's looking toward the bullpen. Wilhelm still throwing and heating up. Strike called. He gets it in there for the three and one. This ball game in the bottom of the seventh. In game one of a Sunday twin bill. Up in his eye had walked him. Here comes Al Lopez. He's not going to wait. Walked number two by Locker. Number three for the Tigers in the game. The leadoff hitter has been walked here. And Al Lopez is coming out. We'll probably get a change in battery here. With a knuckleballer, Wilhelm coming on, we'll probably get J.C. Martin as well. is throwing and Martin is down in the dugout getting that catching paraphernalia. Fourth inning, Cleveland seven, Yankees four. Second inning, Kansas City one, Washington nothing. But Washington's been coming from behind in most of those games over there. Buster Narum against
against O'Donohue in that one. Ninth inning, Boston five, Angels three. Let's get a break in here as we're just about a minute away from 4 o'clock. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. This is WCFL, the voice of labor, Marina City in Chicago. 83 degrees officially at 90 seconds before 4 o'clock. So J.C. Martin comes out now. They had to call him down from the bullpen to get ready. So it's a new battery, Wilhelm on the mound. Martin behind the plate. It's still Ward, Hanson, Buford, and Scourin on the infield. Nicholson, Barry, and Robinson in the outfield. And Jerry Lumpy's the battery. is struck out, walked, scored a run when he walked, and then struck out again. That was all against Tommy John. Lopez is trying to move somebody here. Ward, he's trying to get him over a little closer to the line. That's a ball, it's low, and it's 1-0. Word at first, he led off with a walk against Locker. Lumpy the batter, then it'll be Cash. Knuckleballer Wilhelm ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a tapper foul to the right side. Count is even at 1-1. One one. The Mets have taken a 1-0 lead over the Phillies at the end of an inning. Casey Stengel probably watching and listening in his hospital room broken hip. He'll be operated on in a day or two and maybe out for the season. The 1-1 pitch. That's a ball and it's 2-1. and one. Detroit led 4 to nothing at the end of 4. Sox had an 8-run 6. Right now it is 9-5 White Sox. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on and there is a shot a hit in the right field. Worth going to take off for third. And he will make it as Hanson cuts off the throw. Worth the third on Luffy's ground single to right. It's hit number eight. The first off Wilhelm, of course, the first man that he's faced. Runners at first and third, nobody out, and here is Cash. Cash has struck out, doubled and driven in a run, lined out to the shortstop. Cash is one for three. The pitch to Cash, outside a ball, and it's one and oh. Now the center fielder, Barry, is asking the second base umpire, Paparella, to just move a bit to the right side as he's blocking his vision in toward the mound and the plate. Now this Tiger crowd coming to life again. There's a smash to first. Scour into short, out, back to first. Safe. No double play and a run scores. Work scores. Lumpy is cut down on the force. Three to six if you're keeping a card. Scour in the Hanson. Cash is safe over at first base. They did not get the double play. You know, Milo, actually, Skyron made the wrong play on the ball. He had the ball there at first base. All he had to do was stay on the bag, and the runner from third wasn't going to score. If he did, he had a play on him. The pitch to K-line is a ball. It's 1-0. and Now 9-6. to six. Swing and a foul way up to the right out of play. Fox now that lead cut to three. Fifteen runs, nineteen hits, and we're in the bottom of the seventh. There's only one out. Runner at first is Cash. Low and away, and it's two and one to K-Line. Eddie Fisher is throwing in the bullpen. Al Lopez pulling every stop to try to halt this losing streak. Backs K-Line away, and it's three and one. Wilhelm has given up a single. Cash was safe when they didn't get the double play. A run is in, and the Sox are leading nine to six. It's the Tigers' seventh. 
at Detroit. K-Line today has had one for three, a single, and he drove in a run with it. That was back in the third inning. Cash, the runner at first. Takes the lead as Wilhelm goes to the stretch. Here's the 3-1 pitch. He walked it. Cash to second, K-Line to first with a base on balls. And here comes Al Lopez. Walking to the mound. He's got Eddie Fisher throwing. Al is talking to Wilhelm now. Fisher has not been throwing long. He is not going to take Wilhelm out. single bounced out and struck out. He is one for three. Horton has the plate umpire to look at the ball, which is a rarity with Wilhelm working because the only thing that ever touches that ball is his fingernail. All right, we're ready to go. Runners first and second. The Tigers have something going. The pitch to Horton, swing and a miss, and it's strike one. A run is in. There's only one out. Cash at second, K line at first. Lopez, Gutteridge, Berries, Metro all standing in a quartet there at the edge of the dugout. Here's the pitch. High a ball, and it's one and one. Nine to six, and the way that ball's been flying out of here the last three days, the Tigers have hit nine home runs. Now Lopez realizes. Got to have somebody ready, and he's got Fisher throwing. Wilhelm is our third pitcher today. Here's the pitch. Swing, and a foul back. Bounces right up against the bottom of the screen, and it's ball one, strike two. Martin now is going out to talk to Wilhelm here a moment. Started back toward the plate. Now he goes back to the mound again. All of this, of course, designed to give Fisher just an opportunity to throw maybe three or four more pitches. The difference of having him ready and not being ready. Ball one, strike two. Horton the batter. Wilhelm to the stretch. The check of the runners. Here it comes. It bounces away from Martin, but not enough running buddy to move. Wilhelm and Martin uh, questioning the call a bit on the pitch. Wilhelm thought he had him struck out. But Salerno motions that the pitch was outside. So it's two and two. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two gone. First strikeout for Wilhelm, number nine, against the Tigers in the game. Two away in the inning, and here comes Demeter, has hit home runs in his last two trips to the plate. Boy, what a ball game. If you like high-scoring games, these fans here today are getting it. Cash leads away at second. K-line at first, the pitch to Demeter, swing and a miss, and it's strike one. Demeter homered in the fourth off Tommy John. He homered in the sixth off Locker. He has hit three of the nine Tiger homers here in the last three games. Stretch pitch. It hit his bat. It'll cost him a strike. He was backing away from an inside pitch. Couldn't get the bat back in time. It hit the bat and it's strike two. ready with a new baseball. The veteran right-hander goes to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swinging, line drive short. Hanson has it. Side has been retired. Demeter lines out to Hanson. 
That's it in the seventh, but they get a run to climb within three. One run on only one hit. There were a couple of walks in the inning. No errors. Two men are left. We're now at the end of seven in game one at Detroit. Milo Hamilton and Bob Elson with the story of a big day of baseball here for you. After seven, White Sox leading nine runs, 11 hits. The Tigers, six runs and eight hits. You know, with general finance, everybody from President Dick Trinkman on down, all the managers and members of all the office staffs, are all great baseball fans and great boosters for the White Sox. And that's why every March, and they've been doing it for many years, they serve as the exclusive sponsor for all of our ball games played down in the great state of Florida. Well, General Finance is at your service any time that you're concerned with a money problem, and I'd like to point out that it doesn't have to be a large problem. You don't have to need five or six hundred or a thousand dollars. It can be a need of fifty or seventy-five or a hundred dollars between paychecks or vacation money. Right today, even though it's Sunday, friendly Bob Adams and General Finance are just as close as your telephone. And over three, two oh, two oh. Our ball game is moving to the eighth in the Motor City. Robinson will lead it off against Sherry. Robbie has walked once today and scored a run. He was on base when Romano hit the grand slam in the sixth. Robbie's 0 for 3. Sent the left fielder deep in the fifth inning to the auxiliary scoreboard. The ball outside and high to Robinson. And it's 1-0. and We're in the eighth inning of the opening game of a Sunday twin bill at Detroit. Cubs are batting in the ninth. Tied 2-2. Strike call to Robbie and it's 1-1. Wilson beat Marcelina Lopez 5-4 at Fenway. Boston beating L.A. 5-4. Down inside and low, and it's 2-1. You have Robinson at bat. You have Martin due up next, because remember, he came on to catch when Wilhelm came on. Romano left the game. Pitch to Robbie. Swing and a bouncer foul. First base side. Don Gutteridge grabs it. So it's two and two to Floyd Robinson. Well, that's quite a battle at Wrigley today. Two two in the ninth, Cubs and Pirates. And we got a slugfest going here. Home runs, extra base hits, a lot of pitchers, a lot of runs. Nine to six, White Sox leading. Gladding is throwing in the bullpen. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Robinson. That is number 11 against the Sox in this game. It's number three by Sherry. He has struck out Locker, Buford, and Robinson in order, the last three men that he's faced. That's going to bring up J.C. Martin. Here is J.C. Martin up for the first time in this game. J.C. batting 268. 12 runs batted in, seven doubles, no triples, one homer. Here's the pitch to Martin, and a strike has been called. 0 and 1. Nobody on, one gone, it's the eighth inning. An eight run sixth for the Sox, put him ahead. There is a strike called on a let-up. Boy, did he pull the string on that one. Looked like it was going right over the bend in the rainbow when it came in there. Strike two to J.C. There's a swing and a foul up to the left side and out of play. Sox put nine runs into two innings. One in the fifth, eight in the sixth. The Tigers have scored in four innings, three in the third, one in the fourth, one in the sixth, and one in the seventh. Sox with a three-run edge as they bat in the eighth inning. Here's the pitch. Swing and a 
Smith. He got him with an off-speed breaking pitch again. Strikeout number 12 against the Sox. Four in a row for Sherry. Here comes Pete Ward. He's had one hit in four trips. Ward was at bat twice in that big sixth. He started the inning with a strikeout, later contributed a single, although it did not figure in the scoring. He went to bat right after Romano's grand slam. Stir right. After showing all that slow stuff to Martin, now he zips the fastball by Ward. Strike one. The 0 1 to Ward, tight at the shoulder, and it's ball one and one. Charlie Dressen is probably talking to himself the way Sherry's pitching. And why did not I bring him in instead of Navarro? A lot of things you could do if you could do it again. Swing and a miss by Ward, and it's ball one, strike two. Right-hander ready. Sherry kicks and fires. Swing and a chop. First base side. Cash by the bag. Runs to the bag now. Ward's a gunner. And so Sherry has faced six men in two innings and struck out four of them. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. We're in the middle of the eighth. Sox nine, Tigers six. You know, this July of 1965 can be the happiest Christmas you've had in a long time. That's right. At all general finance offices, it's Christmas in July. And they're lending money in the good spirit of the holiday season. Stop in tomorrow and chat with Santa at any one of our 50 offices in Chicagoland, also in Cicero and Elgin. Maybe you have a particular need at the present time. Maybe you'd like to buy some of the things that you couldn't buy during December because of all of the expenses. Well, this is a good time now to celebrate Christmas in July and to get the things that you really need. In a matter of hours, all the details will be arranged and your cash is waiting for you. So go ahead and have a Merry Christmas in July. Bob Adams and his staff are standing by now and will be all during the doubleheader. The number to call is Andover 3-2-0-2-0. Bottom of the eighth, Wilhelm. We'll work on freehand. Then it'll be McAuliffe, and probably a pinch hitter because Gladding is continuing to throw in the bullpen. Freehand is struck out, singled, and was thrown out in a very fine play by Hanson in the sixth inning when Ronnie went way to his right back into the hole and threw out freehand. There's a swing and a foul to the right side. They've gone to the 10th inning at Chicago. Pirates and Cubs, 2-2. And the other Chicago entry here in Detroit, the Sox are leading the Tigers 9-6. Hoyt Wilhelm working on freehand. As he starts the wind, here's the 0-1 pitch. There's one that goes by Martin to the screen, and it's even at a ball and a strike. By contrast, there's some low-scoring games in the National. Fourth inning, Cardinals won, Dodgers nothing. Fourth inning, Giants won, Braves nothing. Eighth inning, Cincinnati won, Houston nothing. Fourth inning, New York won, Phillies nothing. The ball inside, all of those games won to nothing. Although the Mets in their first game hammered the Phillies. And as we told you, the Cubs have just gone to the 10th in a 2-2 tie with the Pirates. Wilhelm ready on the 2-1 pitch to freehand. Swinging, foul way down to the left side. It was never fair, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Jay Miller for Baltimore and Big Jim Cott for the Twins. Swing and another tapper foul to the right side. So it's still two and two to this big burly catcher of the Tigers, Bill Freehand. Oh, 
Well, if the Orioles could just do it again to the Twins, tighten things up in the top again. The 2-2 pitch. Outside, full count to Freehand. Now as the count goes full, the anticipation in the crowd, you can hear the murmur and the buzz. A little start of staccato clapping way up to the right side in the top of that upper deck. The 3-2 pitch, swing and a smash to third. Buford has it, turns, throws, he got him. Buford actually dropped that ball and fired over. And gets freehand and it's one away. The ball was hit like a bullet. In this inning with Weiss at second, of course, Buford goes to third. The infield is Buford, Hanson, Weiss, and Scourin. Outfield is still Nicholson, Barry, and Robinson. Martin catching. He came on to catch in the seventh when Wilhelm was used in relief. That's a strike, and it's called to McAuliffe. McAuliffe was a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and walked. This is his second trip to the plate in this game. No official time at bat. Down low, and it's a ball and a strike. 1-1 one, one to McCullough. See, the fellow out to hit is probably Northrop, and it is. An outfielder, Ron Northrop, is on deck. Swing out of this. Ball one and strike two. Sox with a three-run lead as the Tigers bat in the eighth inning. Here's the wind and the one-two pitch. Just missed. Two and two. Tommy John pitched the first five innings. Locker pitched in the sixth and walked the leadoff man in the seventh. That brought on Wilhelm. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Number two by Wilhelm. Number ten against the Tigers in the game. Total of 22 strikeouts in this game. 10 against the Tigers, 12 against the Sox. Here is Northrop. This is the first time we've seen this fellow in this series. Northrop the hitter. First pitch is a ball and it's 1-0. Left hand batting outfielder. Hitting 213. That's a strike, and it's called. Youngster getting a look at that dancing medicine ball here. He's had nine doubles, two triples, and a couple of home runs. Driven in 12 runs. Played in 51, or at least appeared in 51 games. And they are in the 90s. This is the Sox 93rd game today. There's a ball outside, and it's 2-1. and one. Wilhelm, and there it is. It's strike called at the letters, and it's two and two with two out. Wilhelm and the Sox trying to keep this lead. They're leading nine to six. Two-two pitch. Almost hit him. He had to back away in a hurry. Full count, three and two on Northrop. Downward, a pesky little leadoff hitter, at least against the White Sox, is due up next. The full count pitch. Swing and a foul. It hit him and then bounced fair. So it's still three and two. Well, when you get an eight-run inning and still have to battle, battle, battle in the late innings. That's exactly what we're doing here today. Here's the pitch. Swing and a bouncer toward the shortstop. Hanson over by the bag. Fires. Side retired. Wilhelm has a three-man inning. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We are now at the end of eight in game one. Milo Hamilton and Bob Elson describing the slugfest for you here today. And at the end of eight, White Sox, nine runs, 11 hits. The Tigers, six runs and eight hits. You know, when a valuable player goes on the sick list, it can spell trouble for his team. When illness strikes, it means money troubles for you. Friendly Bob Adams of General Finance is there to help you anytime, whether that's the problem or some other kind of a problem. And all you have to do is call him at Andover 32020 and tell him what you need. 
anything from twenty-five to five thousand dollars. And the folks at General Finance will go right to work. And tomorrow, when you stop by on your way to work or when you're out shopping, your money will be ready and waiting. So don't worry about this kind or that kind or any kind of a money problem. Get the help you need in a hurry. From Bob Adams and General Finance, the fastest growing company of its kind in America. Just remember, whoever you are and wherever you are, as you listen to a day of baseball, if you have any kind of a money problem, large or small, Bob Adams and General Finance are just as close as your telephone. Scourin will lead it off here in the ninth. The Moose has had two for three. A single popped up, hit by a pitch. And had a hit. He was up twice in the sixth. Actually, him being hit by a pitch started the big eight run inning. Here's Gladding's first pitch. Swung on. Fly ball deep back into center. K-line running to the wall. He won't get it. Man, is that a long home run. He actually hit that ball 450 feet if he hit it an inch. Way back into dead away center by the flagpole. A line drive homer that sailed out of this Tiger Stadium. What a blast by the Moose. It is now 10 to 6. Whoa, did the Moose drop a bomb on Gladding. That's the White Sox, 12th hit of the day. Pitch to Ronnie Hanson, high and inside, a ball. Well, Bob, you don't very often see a ball hit that far as a line drive. No, that was right next to the flagpole. It was between the pole and the 400-foot mark in left center field and went way in. You couldn't pick a further point in this ballpark to hit that ball to, and that was some clout. There's a swing by Ronnie, and he fouls it. Gladding is the sixth. Tiger pitcher in the game. Barry Romano and Scourin have homered. There have been six home runs in the game. They've gotten them from Wirt, Demeter, and Demeter again. So we'll have a four-run lead at least when we go to the bottom of the ninth. Pitch to Hanson. High and away, and it's two and two. Boy, the Moose. And Long, that's his first home run since the All-Star break. Ball two and strike two. Here's a bouncer foul on the third base side. Word hit his off John back in the third. Demeter got his first one off John in the fourth. Demeter hit another in the sixth off Locker. Barry hit his off Lolich. Romano hit a grand slam off Navarro. And now Scourin leads off the ninth with a home run off Gladding. It was our eighth home run off Tiger pitching, the first off Gladding. We've hit three off Lolich. There's a swing and a foul, and the bat flies toward the shortstop. Still two and two. The White Sox have had 12 hits for the second day in a row, but yesterday it was a losing cause, including five for five by Ward. So it would appear a little bit at least, Bob, that uh, the club's starting to hit again. Yes, they really are. Now if we can just get our start, our front line pitching consistent. And with the fine bullpen we have, uh, this second half could still be, uh, uh, we could really get right up there. Gladding winding, 2-2 pitch. Swing and a smash to the left of the shortstop. McAuliffe has it. Fires the cash. Hanson is a goner. And it's one away in the ninth. That's going to bring up Dave Nicholson. He has walked, struck out, single, driven in a run, and scored a run, and popped up. So Big Nick is one for three. As soon as Nicholson completes his turn at bat, we'll be getting in a break as we approach 4.30 in the Motor City. Here's a high fly ball, deep to right center, but it's very, very high. Demeter, K-line, collide, but who's got it? Demeter's got the ball. There was a ball hit 415 feet deep to right center. He hits that ball in our ballpark, it's gone. Glanding will be shell-shocked here. 
Gowan hit a line drive 440, and Big Nick just hit one 415, and it didn't go out. Here's Barry. Barry's had a homer and a single, driven in two runs, and scored twice. First pitch, strike called. Ken Barry, center fielder. Strike called. 0 and 2. Gotten two in here on Ken. Now gliding winding, here it is. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on three pitches. That is the 13th White Sox to strike out here today. In the inning, one run, one hit, a line drive homer, a long one by the Moose. No errors, nobody left. We are in the middle of the ninth. The Tigers coming up for their last shot. It's the White Sox 10 and the Tigers 6. You know, when General Finance first came into our White Sox baseball picture a number of years ago, they had only six or seven offices around Chicagoland. I can well remember it. And at that time, a General Finance office was pretty hard to come by. But as you drive around the great city of Chicago now, well, you see those familiar General Finance signs and friendly Bob Adams signs just about everywhere. No other company in this business can show anywhere near this tremendous rate of progress. And just remember that General Finance is a service organization. They're at your service and want to be of service to you anytime. And in this week past, if you've been concerned about a money problem, don't carry it into the week ahead. Do something about it today. Call Bob Adams at General Finance now, even though it's a Sunday, for immediate service. At Andover 3, 2-0-2-0. I mentioned that Scourin had not had a home run since the All-Star break. He hadn't had a home run since the 2nd of July against Chance at L.A. at Chavez Ravine. It had been 21 games and 23 days since Scourin had hit a home run. And it was his 12th to keep the club lead. Tommy McCraw's into play first base. Weiss at second, Hanson short, Buford at third. Still Big Nick, Barry, and Robbie in the outfield. Wilhelm ready to pitch in the ninth, and Wirt is the batter. There's a strike, and it's called. Wilhelm working in the third inning. Of relief for him in this game. Ten to six. White Sox lead by four. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a tapper foul to the right side. Now let's get in that break. First chance we've had. This is the WCFL Chicago White Sox Baseball Network. This is WCFL, the voice of labor, Marina City, Chicago, where you hear Paul Harvey News at noon every day, Monday through Friday. 431, it's 83 degrees. Strike two to Wordy is homered and walked. Scored two of their six runs. He scored the first one and he scored the sixth one. It's outside and it's ball one, strike two. Well, if the Sox can hang on to this, this will really be a come from behind. We were down four to nothing at the end of four innings. There's a bouncer foul to the right side. Worth trying to do what a lot of the hitters do against Wilhelm, just trying to hit that ball to the opposite side. It's fouled off a couple, and it's ball one and strike two. Fifth inning at Washington, Kansas City leading the Senators, one to nothing. But those Senators have had a way of breaking out of it over this weekend against Kansas City. They're only down by a run. That's a ball low, and it's two and two. Wirt is the leadoff hitter in the Tiger ninth. Tigers, who had a four-run lead at one time, now down by four. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a bouncer to third. Buford has it. The long throw across into the dirt, but McCraw comes up with it. Word is out. Buford to McCraw, third to first. They've gone to the 11th inning at Chicago. Pittsburgh and the Cubs still in a 2-2 tie. Remember tomorrow night, the Cubs and the White Sox play at Sox Park. The benefit of boys baseball in the Chicago area. Here is Lumpy. He's walked, singled, struck out twice. Here's a pop. Martin, if he can find that ball, if the umpire will move, there it is. Two gone. Martin 
Martin was a little undecided on which way to go. Salerno was trying to judge from Martin's move which way he should go, and they almost, I thought for a minute he was going to ask him for a dance. Two gone in the Tiger ninth. Cash is the hitter. He's driven in two runs. There's a strike right at the knee, and it's 0-1. Well, sometimes a game like this can really get you rolling again. Let's hope so. An eight-run sixth was the highlight. There's a line drive. McCross oh. bears it. He just took a double away from Cash. What a play by Tommy. A line drive that McCraw leaped quickly and speared. Took a double away from Cash. You can't hit a ball any harder than that. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Wilhelm knocked down the last eight men that he faced. And the final score in game one is the Sox get up off the floor and knock off the Tigers finally. The final score, the White Sox 10, the Tigers 6. We'll be back in 60 seconds with a summary, a recap, and the totals on all of the action. 